Good afternoon. Today is Friday, July 5th, 2013, and this is Brian Shannon speaking from alphatrends.net. Hope everyone enjoyed their uh, 4th of July holiday. The markets were up nicely today. Let's take a look at the numbers here. Uh, today, we were up 1% in the S&P 500, and that put us up 1.6% for the week and, of course, the month. Uh, it was bonds that got hit real hard, and the uh, yield on the 10-year uh, treasuries is now uh, 271. So uh, let's take a look at what we have here. I talk a lot about what the potential for a market is and the reason I don't like to make predictions is because I don't think anyone is capable of predicting what the market can do or is, is going to do but instead we look at it in terms of probabilities and likelihoods and say where does the market come from where does it have the potential to go so in this case we saw the market come down uh, over the last uh, couple weeks and it did hit upon as we know about the 50% retracement of the year-to-date range and this orange moving average is also the volume weighted average Average price year to date. So that was tested. What the scenario that I thought was most likely is that we would get a bounce up into this general area uh, right up around 162 and then we would find resistance and decline. That's what I thought was the most likely scenario and I've been talking about that as potential resistance because we had this two-thirds retracement of the highs just before the Fed as well and that it, although this was the likely scenario it made no sense to get short until we saw actual trend uh, reversal from the market. So we've had a, a recovery that's uh, tested the five-day moving average the other day, and we've been focused on the sellers regaining control if it got back below the volume-weighted average price from the low and also the volume-weighted average price since the Fed. So they kind of come together at about 160-ish. And we've been talking about 159.5 to 160 as the key support, that unless we broke below that, we were just going to say that the market has the potential to turn lower because because it has this prior support, which has the potential to act as resistance. But price action hasn't given us any reason to sell short. In fact, of the, the stocks that uh, subscribers on Alpha Trends have been focused on this week, we've talked a little bit about some short ideas, but mainly from the long side on the individual stocks, because the stocks have held up better. And today we had a really nice day in terms of uh, the, the buyers proving their resilience. A lot of people, you know, as the market gapped up, the SPY up to daily S to, uh, R2 rather, and then pulled back down to the two-day uh, pivot, a lot of people were thinking that the market would fail. And I in here thought that it would as well. But if you were going to be short uh, for the reversal, that the stop should go up around this area. Well, it recovered and closed right at the highs of the day. So I think that anyone who's been trying to sell this market short here in the last week and a half, two weeks, has certainly been frustrated and early. And we have to wait until the trends are aligned, that we have the shorter, short and intermediate term telling us that it's time to turn lower. So impressive week really for the bulls that they were able to recover and hold on to the uh, gains uh, that, we, that we've seen so far. And we continue to add to the uh, the recovery here. So let's take a look at the NASDAQ next. The NASDAQ was up 55 cents today. And we had been looking for some resistance in this general area as well, 72 to 72 and a half. This was a potential level of resistance. No one knows what resistance is until after the fact. What we're looking for is maybe something to occur like this that we then break down find resistance at the declining at the five-day moving average and that five-day moving average begin to decline and then break down from there that didn't happen so there's no reason to uh, get involved on the short side we want to anticipate the potential scenario and where the resistance might be and then wait for price confirmation wait for it to break below and hold below that 159 and a half 160 before we actually participate instead we had a theory we had an idea of what might happen for the market but the market we don't want to project our uh, interpretation of what should happen versus what is actually on folding in front of our eyes. Our plan has to be dynamic. The market gives us new information. And you have to be super impressed uh, with the way that this S&P 500 continues to, uh, to to show resilience. We may break down next week. We'll see. But for now, it, it's impressive that we got above this uh, two-thirds retracement level that we've been talking about. And those. Uh, uh, so this is the two-thirds retracement I'm talking about right here, uh, that we got above and held above that level. And we still have a rising five-day moving average in the SPY and in the Qs. So we can't be bearish yet until we break down 
and really hold below about 71 and a half for the Nasdaq. And the Russell 2000, um, I'm not sure. I didn't even uh, check yet. Let's check this together. This might be an all-time closing high. The, the high, uh, the close on uh, this day here, June 18th, was 90, what is that, 99.51. And today we had a, a close of 99.67. So an all-time closing high in the Russell 2000. It's really tough to be bearish when the market is doing that. Instead, when the market pulls back, we look at it and say, okay, wait, the market is sending us a message. Is this something that we need to take seriously and think that it's time for a reversal? And we did that with every other time so far this year that we get Get cautious when we have these these kind of shocks to the system. Uh, you don't want to rush out. I don't want to rush out and try to buy the lows. Um, in this case, you know, near the 50% retracement, near the uh, volume weighted average price. That's not what I look at those levels for. I look at them as reference points. Just as in the Nasdaq, the reference point was the two-thirds retracement and the VWAP year to date. Hindsight says they were great places to purchase. But if the market rallied up to 71 and then uh, got sent back down to 67, it would wouldn't be. We have to look at price confirmation. You can look at this and say, I shoulda, coulda, woulda. And that's what losers do is shoulda, coulda, woulda. There's nothing wrong with learning from your mistakes. But in terms of saying, oh, I, I knew I should have bought down there or I could have done this or that, you know, that's, that's, that's hindsight. It doesn't do anything. You have to say, what are the odds? Do I want to look at myself in, in terms of this market, in terms of gamble, being a gambler and taking shots, or do you want to have a consistent, disciplined approach to the market that, that are based on the way the, the markets typically trade and, and listening to the price action rather than headlines? So that's what I focus on at Alpha Trends every single day and each week try to consistently deliver to you uh, here on YouTube and in the email um, with, with this market analysis. The semiconductors, you know, they held on as well. They held on to their key level of support. They held on to the five-day moving average, which is rising. 37 uh, and a quarter to 37 and a half was our focus area. Really, even down to 37. This is 37 to 37 and a half. That was our key level that if it broke down in here, perhaps we're undergoing a little bit of distribution before another intermediate term decline. Instead, we got impressively back up above that 38 level, which has been somewhat important. And we're in a bigger range here, I guess you could say, but with lower highs and lower lows. But we still have this market uh, really seemingly have uh, more resilient. It's, it's more resilient uh, than I think a lot of people are expecting it to be, and uh, myself included. So the the financials up at nineteen dollars and eighty two cents. Nineteen eighty ish has been all right. Nineteen really fifty to eighty has been kind of the band of resistance that we were expecting. That if we were going to find resistance, this would be the place to do it, and we weren't going to get bearish until we saw a pattern of lower highs of, of support broken and lower highs and lower lows below a flat to declining five-day moving average. That didn't happen. The people who got short early got squeezed in here and the market finished out right at the highs for the week and perhaps we continue back up to 20 again. The, uh, the you know, the gold buyers, you know, those who thought it was down too much in that, again, you know, there are some people obviously who've bought gold this year and certainly in the past uh, two and a half years who, who are, are, uh, are profitable, but the people who have bought, uh, you know, really and are profitable only really occurred underneath this little line of 118. So there's very few people that are holding gold long who've purchased in the last two years who are making money. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's again, the, the reasons I don't trade gold, we get these gaps that are just awful. You think you have the, the recovery nailed, and then it gaps down and takes everything away from you. Um, I don't trade it. I don't think it's a good vehicle to trade. And even if it were a good vehicle to trade and to buy, you don't want to buy in a downtrend. If they don't scare you out on the way down, they will typically wear you out. It's going to be a long time for gold to get back up to 140, 150, 160. The, uh, the bonds, as we mentioned, uh, got creamed here today. Um, they gapped lower and again trying to pick the recovery and when the market's turning lower is just a really it's kind of a fool's game. We saw that uh, 
10-year uh, yield rates are now up to 2175. So that's the highest rates have been in quite a while here. And we can see that on the weekly TLT chart that we've broken some important support at 110. And perhaps we continue lower or we get a recovery bounce. But we're guilty to a proven innocent in the TLT and, and in bonds in general. Um, so trying to pick the lows, it's going to be a, an exercise in frustration. You'll get some bounces along the way, but the path of least resistance is lower. Let's talk about Apple for a minute. Apple got up to about where we were expecting it to this week, which was right at that 20-day moving average, which is declining. And then we also then looked at the volume weighted average price since the most recent high, which is right here at about 423. So we took this high right here and drew a line straight across. That's about 423. And today's high was 423.29. So we're right up in this area where it appears Apple has the potential to find some resistance. The intermediate term trend, however, with the five-day moving average rising, I don't think you want to be short it. I also don't think you want to be long this thing we're coming into potential resistance so you have to take each stock and each trade as it sets up you want to have an idea of what's potential uh, to be there and know when the right time to take action is and then where to manage risk those are the principles that I focus on every single day in alpha trends for premium subscribers so if you haven't taken a look uh, feel free to take the seven-day trial we've got a webinar coming up Monday evening and uh, I'd like to, to see people in that and kind of get a feel for what alpha trends is all about thanks for tuning in enjoy the rest of your weekend